My name is Jay Crudy. I'm an instructor of music industry studies at Loyola University New Orleans. And I'm here today to tell you about the difference between vacuum tubes and solid state amplification in audio equipment. <laughs> Vacuum tubes were the first type of amplifying devices developed. In the early 1900s, uh, amplifying devices were non-existent and vacuum tubes were the first electronic means for enhancing a signal's uh, voltage or current levels. Up to that point, if you want to generate a high voltage signal, you had to use some kind of mechanical amplification. They actually used to have spinning wheels and gears and stuff that would amplify voltage levels. It was very limiting in terms of what you could accomplish. Because of their invention, it enabled all the wide variety of electronic devices we have today, like televisions, amplifiers, telephones, all, all kind of devices. <laughs> Much has been said about the vacuum tube sound. Tubes are very popular today in music still because people feel they have a characteristic sound. Tubes do not differ from solid state devices in many ways. Transistors have very similar characteristics to tubes. And in fact, there are many transistors which model tube behavior. Tubes do exhibit some characteristics that are notable, especially when you saturate a tube. Saturation means when the tube is pushed to its maximum amplification amounts. When you saturate a tube, tubes tend to exhibit a uh, enhanced amount of even order harmonics. Even order harmonics are similar to musical octaves in that they are musically pleasing and combine well with the original sound. Now solid state devices are kind of equal opportunity employers in that they will produce even and odd order harmonics in equal amounts. Solid state devices can also be designed and operated in ways to produce more even order harmonics. But once again, you know, tubes have a reputation for easily producing the even order harmonics when they saturate. <laughs> It all depends on, I think, what you're looking for. I don't think there's like a right or wrong choice with what amp style you choose. I guess it, you know, it all depends on what you're looking for and also you know, what price range you're talking to. Uh, definitely if you are you know, purchasing a digital amp, the prices will be you know, much lower than they will for a, a tube amp, naturally. With solid state amps, I find, at least with the kind of music that I do, I do a lot of uh, progressive rock and like math rock. The digital amps tend to, you know, emit a, I guess, a, a heavy sound uh, for that purpose. Like, I, I don't feel like there's a real need for me to have a tube amp. This thing uh, reproduces. I guess the sound of a tube amp uh, pretty well. I mean, obviously it's not accurate. You're never gonna be able to completely recreate you know, the original sound. Today we see many amplifiers are hybrids that will use, say, a tube preamp section, but a solid state power amp section. Sometimes you even see some boutique amplifiers that use the opposite, where they have solid state preamplification but then tube power amplification. So tubes can be used interchangeably with solid state transistors and in many ways complement the abilities of solid state transistors. Follow your heart, you know, find the amp that's got the sound you want and that's what you should buy and enjoy. <laughs>